What up, Derek Jeter? Good to see you, man. Good to see you guys, too. Pedro, it's not always good to see you, man, but it's good to see you now. Well, thank you so much. Mutual <laughs> respect, Captain. I did not want to see you with someone on in a dangerous game. No, 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 no. I will deal with A-Rod. I will deal with everybody else, but not you. I appreciate it. Good to see you guys. Good to see you, too. I tell you, I, I could talk all day with you two about Boston and facing <laughs> each other, but we're going to focus in on Roberto, okay? Are you guys good with that? All right, let's talk about the Clemente Award. Derek, I talked about 2009, you won the award. You've won so many things. You sit in the Hall of Fame with Pedro, your, your partner here. Um, along the way, we, we win a lot of different awards as a baseball player. Where does the Clemente Award sit for you? You know what, H, I mean, I'll tell you what, it, it sits right there up at the top because it, it's not just about what you did on the field. You know, I think you go around and you ask everyone in, in the game about Roberto Clemente, the first thing that comes to mind is all the work that he did in the community. I mean, look, he, he tragically passed away giving relief aid, emergency aid, um, and and the tragic accident. And and it's, it really is unfortunate, but I think then your, your mind goes to just what he stood for, not just his stats on the field and the fact that he's a Hall of Fame baseball player, but just how much giving back to the community meant to him. Well, DJ, I, I, I'm curious to know, you were always looked at someone that was the leader, the captain of the team. You were that person that everybody looked up to. But when you see Clement and you see the clips and you see how he stood up for black players, Latino players, uh, everything in general that he stood up for, uh, how does that make you feel? And should Major League retire his number 21? Well, you know, look, I think the thing that stands out with Roberto, like I said, is just how much he gave back. I, I think, you know, what he stood for, what he represented, you know, he was playing for more than just the sport of baseball. He was playing for his country. He was playing for his people. He was playing for his community. And those are things that I think rubbed off on the next generation of players. And still to this day, you have so many players that are giving back. So, you know, look, I'm not the one that makes the decisions on whether or not someone's number should be retired, but you talk about, uh, someone who has done so much for the game and the sport and the legacy lives on to this day. I mean, he's he's right there at the top. And, and uh, you know, I was just I was so um, proud of the fact that I was able to win this award because I do think it is it is it is an award that people strive to win. They, they strive to be considered for because it's much more than just the game. Yeah. And the beauty of that statement, Derek, it, it affects every ball player. You don't have to hit 300 to win the Roberto Clemente Award. It's about community and everything else. You started hey, you your turn. Hey, you know what, H, let me add this, though, too. You don't have to hit 300 to give back to your community. You exactly. know, when, you, when you're playing the sport, you have the platform. And, you know, I was always taught at a young age, if you have the platform, you should give back. And um, you see so many players that are doing that uh, in today's game, and I think a lot of that goes back to, you know, hearing about Roberto Clemente. And I was going to dive in with you. Let's go back to Kalamazoo, Michigan, 1996, when you started your Turn 2 Foundation. What was the emphasis behind that, and why did you do that? Because you hadn't been in the big leagues very long. Yeah, you know, I started in 1996 after my first year, H, and, you know, you, you made a trip out to Kalamazoo as well. You've been very supportive of our work that my family has done. I appreciate that. Pedro, I know you do so much in the community down in the Dominican, and, and, and you really deserve a round of applause for that, and everyone needs to commend you for what you have done. You know, what we wanted to do, we wanted to motivate young people to turn away from alcohol and drugs and, and turn to, turn to uh, healthy lifestyles, and we want kids to reach their full potential. And one of our signature programs that we have is our leadership program. And it's a four-year leadership development program with high school kids in the New York area and the West Michigan area, obviously, where I grew up. And we foster academic achievement, positive behavior, social change. We want to teach kids that their voices are powerful. They should learn to use them at a young age. So then when they're adults, they're a lot more comfortable using them. So uh, the only way we've been able to have uh, success as a foundation is all the support that we've gotten from the community, but I look at it as, you know, this is what you should be doing. It's part of your responsibility. Well, Derek, proud of you, young man. Coming a long ways, youngster. I appreciate <laughs> that. And Pedro, now we're not competing against each other, man. Don't be afraid to invite me to one of your foundation events. We will do that for <laughs> sure. But more than anything, I have you as my teammate. And, and uh, you know, I have Joe, Joe also as my teammate. 
in Cooperstown, you will never go away from my team, boy, because I don't want to <laughs> face you again. I appreciate it, brother. Good to see Thank you, guys. Thank you, bro. Thank you. God bless you. You don't and have your to family. worry about wearing that arm pad, Derek. He's not going to be throwing balls at you <laughs> no more. It's all good. <laughs> all right. We appreciate it, Derek. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.